How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. SummerSlam was last night. You know, I have a lot to say about this show. It was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Didn't need to be great because it was an angle-heavy show. The angles told the story. It wasn't a match-style pay-per-view. But, I mean, my God, what a beautifully shot show. We'll talk about that a little bit. I, I was so impressed by that production. It looked so big. Everything was so grand. But the matches, the finishes, fascinating stuff. We're going to talk about the fallout from SummerSlam, Judgment Day left in shambles. After betrayals from Dominic and Finn. Braun Breaker, LA Knight, both won titles. Roman Reigns returned. He's finally back. What a new theme. I, don't, I want to know. What do you guys think of that theme? We'll see. It was so loud in there. It was hard to kind of tell, right? We also have some news coming out of AEW. A lot of, a lot of news out of AEW this week. Tony Khan in Paris right now. He flew to Paris to meet with Zaslov. To figure out what's going on with this WBD deal. I'm sure we'll have some more information coming next week. Britt Baker suspended due to an altercation that happened at Dynamite 250. Inclu involving MJF. We also have some highlights from Collision and everything else that's happening. But a very SummerSlam heavy show. A lot of news coming out of this. A lot of angles have been set up. And my biggest problem was they didn't fully commit to that Shawn Michaels spot with The Undertaker and Brett. They almost did it. All this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I had a good weekend. I was at a pool party in the afternoon. At an Oyster Bay, Long Island. I hung out by the pool. I got home. As soon as I'm home, boom, the show's starting. <laughs> Everything was great. Man, though, that was a long pre-show. What was that, 14 hours long, MG? Producer extraordinaire to the show? It was a three-hour uh, pre-show, I do believe. Three-hour pre-show. Which pre -show. was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You know what I was thinking, what would be interesting? Um, this, might, this probably was a huge weekend for Peacock. Probably broke records. Oh, yeah. As far as live oh, yeah. viewership... I can't imagine they've ever had a a more traffic weekend for that for that service than or or day in the history of Peacock because you not only did you have this show you also have the Olympics which has which been a, a major success yeah. it was a big mm -hmm. metal day uh, metal music mm -hmm. right not 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 gold medals <laughs> they're just playing metal yeah. um, I, I you know I and the service held up I had no issues they did a good job with this. But very interesting uh, weekend to have this on. The show kicked off with Jelly Roll. First he sang God Bless America. Then Triple H's music hit. Triple H came out. And he told him, he introduced him again and he sung his song. He sung his song. He sung his hit song, Liar. Which is also the theme song of this show. Uh, the building looked beautiful. The presentation, obviously, uh, they have... It was really, you know, WrestleMania, you saw it, right? WrestleMania. But with this show, for whatever reason, it stood out a little bit more to me. They have really solidified these production changes that they've made. Everything is shot awesome. so beautifully. Uh, that Cody entrance, which we'll talk about it, you know, when we, when we run down this card, was just so beautifully shot. Forget about what you thought of the match. So beautifully shot. I mean, everything they did was just... Uh, really what a what a up in production value what a night and day i posted uh i posted that you know on twitter or an x cody had a beautiful entrance and somebody goes yeah the only thing was missing was 30 cuts from kevin dunn and i'm like yeah you know it, it, it they've really they've really pulled back all that the the dunisms i guess in Dunism, wwe production word now <laughs> now it is i've made it into a word the man on my shirt says I can, okay? Mm -hmm. You know. First match was Liv Morgan 
the, defending the title against Rhea Ripley. Rhea and Dominic came start, out. Yeah. Before you start, I wanted there's something that I a nice touch I noticed. They brought that 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 humming music they used to drop the cage to back. That, I call that uh, the Bret Hart steel cage. The Bret Hart. The Bret yeah. Hart uh, coming down for a serious. Uh, mm -hmm. To a yeah. serious, yeah. And the back and the backstage, they did it for Cody and they did it for Rhea to start. And I was like, "That's a nice touch. I really that is that. a nice touch." And you know what? That kind of sets the tone. You know, mm -hmm. it gives yep. you goosebumps. Like, this oh, is a man. big deal. This, this is, is a, a big, big deal. Yeah. Rhea Ripley came out. Liv came out. Rhea looked great. Um, you know, I think the story of this sh of this match and the same with the Punk match was a lot of smoke and mirrors. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not sure Rhea's 100%. I'm not sure Punk is 100%. You know, they were cutting it down to the line. They're just getting over these injuries. And they played it safe. The story of Dominic Mysterio on the outside was being told. He was very pro-Rhea. Uh, this is where it gets convoluted, right? And, and some of this is a little bit of overbooking. I love this mm -hmm. program. And I also love the Punk program, okay? Dominic did not pick a side. Rhea had the chair. Liv came in with the chair. Didn't stop her, right? She gets in the chair. Whatever happens, she loses control of the chair. Rhea gets the chair. Then Dominic decides, no, you can't win like this. So he's no, still he, doing the right thing. Yeah, he, he made sure. He goes, you don't, you're don't. you going to get disqualified if you hit her. Don't yeah. do it. You're going to so get DQ'd. That, that was good, yeah. And There's nothing wrong with that. He was, she was too distracted, yeah. and she got pinned and lost. Liv goes to the outside. Mm -hmm. Dominic goes around, picks Liv up. Liv is shocked, then starts making out with Liv, and they both walk away together. So there was – so there was uh, – I went back and watched the ending of this. Dom knew what he was doing. Dom – they showed him smiling, which I didn't catch the first time around. They're going to explain so it, obviously, tomorrow. Yeah. They'll explain it he well. He deliberately did it. Yeah, he deliberately did it. Um, but, I, yeah, it was like, wow, that was a crazy ending. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. You know what? It's the right ending. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. And this was the big – there were so many stories being told everywhere in every match. Yes. And, you know, kudos to them to be able to do that because that's something that's very difficult. But there were multiple layers being told here. One, it's a Judgment Day story, right? What's happening in Judgment Day? Two, the Dominic Rhea story. Three, Dominic and Liv. And now Rhea and Liv, uh, her her anger towards those two. And Damien okay. and uh, Damien and. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Finn, Finn Balor. Yeah. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. it was real look good. Her, the story was also her shoulder. They told that story that she had to pop it back in place. Uh. Fun that, match. That, that looked gross. That looked. I know they had worked it. But oh, man, how the bone looks, was sticking out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but probably, probably she still has swelling on that bone. Probably. Most mm -hmm. likely. I I thought it was a. I, I like this match. It was good. Uh, continuing the story. What ends up happening after the match? Rhea's furious in the ring. Dominic picked up Liv, like I said, made out with her, and they left. They cut to the Judgment Day clubhouse, where Damian Priest is out of control and looking for Dom. So, I, I like that Damien is the baby face here. You know, he's the, he's the stand-up guy. He's doing the right thing. He asked Finn if he knew. Finn seemed upset, and he, as upset he asked. So, again, that's part of the story here. Mm -hmm. They vowed to find Dom, Dom while Damien was getting ready for his match. So, you could see maybe Damien's a little distracted. Following this, you had Braun Breaker defeating Sami Zayn. This match only went five minutes. Yep. It was a spear fest. <laughs> it was. The match was built all around <laughs> Braun's ability to hit a spear very fast. Braun, Braun immediately went for the spear, but leaped over. Uh, Sami leaped over in his shoulder first into the post. That was also, they did that spot in like every match. The yeah, shoulder into the yeah, post. It, was, it just it just felt like two matches in a row, almost like within like 20 minutes. And I was like, they, could they have done something else? I yeah. mean, or could he have sold something else, like a like his ribs or something, yeah. just to be so, different? I mean, th that was a story. Uh, after some struggling, Braun hit two spears, and uh, in a row, and that was it. I, I think this is great. Uh, Braun Breaker, obviously, what a, what a what an athletic freak. Uh, you know, they're building 
They're building around him. He's young. Who knows what he'll be that in ten years, right? That Frankensteiner he hits. That Frankensteiner he hits makes puts what um, his uncle did to shame. Oh yeah, like, he's, wow. <laughs> so good. He's so good. Um, just good stuff. I I I like Braun. I I hope this isn't uh this isn't the downgrade for Sammy. I hope they do something interesting with him. Maybe he joins the bloodline story. Maybe he goes yeah, over to I, that story. I was wondering that. It's a good. He is a blind line. He is an oos. Mm. People tend to forget that. What do you think of Braun though? Where do you think he's going to be in five years? Oh, he'll be. He'll be by that by five years. He'll have had that championship at least twice. You, you think he'll be a world champion in five years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I got to tell you, man, he is. Really impressive. It once is, you know, his promos aren't bad. All he has to do is yell like his uncle and bark like his dad. <laughs> That's all he has to do. <laughs> and people will love it. I think he's fantastic. Uh, we'll see where he ends up. When we come back from break, I want to go into LA Knight, Logan Paul. This was a really good match. Very good match. A lot of story being told. Uh, Logan was very disliked, even though he's a Cleveland guy. Machine Gun Kelly also was uh, at ringside. We'll talk about that. But where does Logan Paul go from here? Is he done? Does he disappear? I think it might be good to, for him to step back a little bit and then come back. We'll talk about this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Actually, uh, while I was on break, I got the rundown of how many minutes this show was. So, here are the match numbers for anybody interested. They went 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 17 minutes, 15 minutes, 19 minutes, 16 minutes, and 29 minutes. Total time spent watch waiting for the match to start was 2 hours, 5 minutes, and 29 seconds. 52.8% of the PLE. Total wrestling time was... One hour and 48 minutes and 55 seconds. The average wait time was 17.55. That's wild. If true, I haven't done the math myself. That is, that is something. That's quite an ability to be able to put on uh, an hour 50 of matches on a, on a 10 hour program or whatever the hell it was. LA Knight defeated Logan Paul to win the United States Championship in 12 minutes. Machine Gun Kelly would come out to the ring with Logan Paul. He was playing heel. LA Knight was completely over with the crowd. Logan would end up hitting a springboard clothesline and an impressive springboard moonsault to the outside. I like this match. These guys worked really hard. This was... Uh, I, I don't know. Did you not like this? Oh, I liked it. I thought I thought that moonsault was really that that popped me hard. As like, you can't you can't downplay his uh, Logan Paul's athleticism. It is yeah. off the charts, like amazing for a yeah. guy that's only been doing this for a couple Short of years period. now. Mm, Machine yeah. Gun Kelly gave but, brass knucks to uh, Logan Paul. So I didn't like the ending because he hit him with the knucks. Yeah, and then and then night ducked it again so he's already hit he shouldn't be if he's if he just got hit with brass knucks i don't think he would be able to hit that bft at least that's i just it felt a little clunky at the end mm. for me I'm getting news while we're doing this about uh certain questions you had asked before the show mm. okay okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh night ducked a buckshot lariat and hit the BFT for the pinfall win. This is this is much needed. You know, we 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 spoke about the rise of LA Knight in WWE, and you know he goes to NXT. He was Eli Drake. He was TNA World Champion. Uh, goes to NXT. Then they call him up to the main roster with some insane gimmick, and then it goes away. What was his name? Uh, Max Dupree. Max mm -hmm. Dupree. What a dumb name. What a stupid. That that's been so forgotten about. thank God. Thank God they reversed <laughs> course. Thank God, because that was a kiss of death. He's, he's so fantastic. Uh, 
you know, it, it's reminiscent of a real, like, old-school wrestling act that we grew up with. It's a very 90s wrestling act. Look at the camera, yell at me, threaten the town. You know, it's all the classics. He's great at, at that. Good to see him with the U.S. title. Does this? Where does this go from here? Who's he feuding with? Uh, Andrade would be a great opponent. Yeah, I mean, he's babyface. So it would have to be a heel. But I guess Andrade could be... Andrade could uh, be heel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who else could be gunning for this? Um, Maybe... Do you dare go back to Austin Theory or his the other guy? That yeah, you could have a lot of those guys go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And they'll have decent matches. Yeah. After this, we got Nia Jax defeating Bailey to win the WWE Women's Championship. I don't think people thought Nia would win this. I think if Bailey didn't win, everybody was expecting Tiffany to cash in yes. and to come in and get the title and run out of there. They went in a very different direction. This went 12 minutes, 32 seconds. It started off very slow, and the crowd was kind of dead in the beginning. Then Bailey hit a power bomb on Jax and totally woke up the crowd. Tiffany Stratton's music hit. Uh, you know what happened? I, I was, my kids were watching this because, uh, you know, it, it was a nice Saturday night. You, you know, you have the pay-per-view on. My kids are into this. It was a lot of fun. I'm having a glass of wine. And when the music hit, I actually got up because my dog wanted to go out. And I came mm -hmm. back and I was like, oh, Tiffany's cashing in. And I had to rewind and see what happened. I'm like, wait a minute. What, what just happened? Okay. Tiffany ran out with a no. briefcase, but the ref... Uh, uh, and the ref uh, with w briefcase and a ref, but ref. Bailey yeah. was knocked yeah. off the apron. Mm -hmm. She she hit ba she, Bailey knocked her off the apron. Yeah, yeah. So Bailey can, can I fill in a blank yeah. here? Yeah, give me the blank. So so on SmackDown, and I have it in the notes from SmackDown. There was a segment where she Nia Jax gifted her a new brief, a custom briefcase. I saw that. Pink. So. And she said specifically, but you can't cash in tomorrow. And she took the briefcase. So I, that plays into this a little bit. She gave her a Halliburton. That's what you're telling me. Right. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. in the briefcase? <laughs> Bricks? I don't know. <laughs> Money? Mm. Who's funding this? Is a tribal chief funding this? You see, it's all connected. Oh, my. You Wow. <laughs> Jax hit consecutive annihilators for the pin. So Nia Jax is the WWE Women's Champion in 12 minutes, 32 seconds. We now go into the most intriguing of matches of the night. This was a very important match. Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk with Seth Rollins as a special guest referee. Uh, I, they did a lot of smoke and mirrors here. They, did, they played it so safe with Punk. And again, the match was not a bad match. It was, they, they played it safe. However, this is my personal opinion. The ending was very overbooked with that bracelet. The story wasn't necessarily Drew and Punk. It was, what is Seth going to do? Yep. Punk was the aggressor. The fight spilled all over the place. Went outside. Rons let him go. He didn't bother counting. McIntyre would go for the chair, and it looks like they were going to do the 97 spot. Now, this 97 spot that we're talking about, it's Undertaker, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. Drew is playing the role of Undertaker, and you know, you know how I noticed it? He had the scales on the back of his jacket, and Undertaker had those scales on the back of his shirt for that match. Mm -hmm. CM Punk came dressed up as a Bret Hart, Phil Hart. Phil the Hitman Hart. And, and Seth Rollins had the cutoff and the slick back hair, much like Shawn Michaels in that match. So they're foreshadowing here. They're giving it to you, making you say, ooh, they're going to do it. And they kind of did it. They didn't fully do it. McIntyre went for the chair. They teased it. They went back and forth. He almost, uh, Seth almost, he grabbed the chair. He was shoved by, by Drew. He swung and he stopped himself before hitting Punk. Then the story became the bracelet. Mm -hmm. the Drew would take the bracelet weird. out of his trunks, put it on his wrist. That triggered CM Punk into, uh, he was seeing, essentially he went into the same rage he went in at the brawl out. 
<laughs> it was just flashing back. That's scrum. The muffins all flashing in his head when this is happening. He's enraged. It triggered Punk, who got the upper hand, only to take off the bracelet instead of locking in the anaconda vice. So he took the bracelet off. He put in the anaconda vice to get it. Somehow that bracelet drops to the floor. Seth picks it up and puts it on his wrist. As a See, ref would do, right? A ref would, as a ref would you know, do. Yeah, or put it in his pocket. Okay. That would have been a better play, but it told a story, I guess. How about, you know what would have been great? What if Seth was like taking it off to give it to him and he ripped it up? Like it just snapped. Oh. Okay. So you're like, you ruined this thing. So it gives him more of a reason. Why is Punk attacking, attacking this guy? He picked that up. He put it on his wrist. Finish your match. I'll give it back to you. Mm -hmm. And he Seth doesn't have too, beef with AJ way. and the dog. Yeah, yeah he told him that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, why did he become a dumb baby face all of a sudden? For, the, for one of the smartest men in there. One of the most, you know, yep. mm -hmm. smart pro wrestlers all of a sudden you know in the middle of the match he decides me winning is not important i really need this bracelet on my wrist at this very moment <laughs> he picked drew up for the anaconda uh, for the for the gts he dropped him goes after seth he mess he hits seth with a gts rollins is down on the floor he gets a, he gets a low blow he gets hit with a claymore and guess what happened at the end Drew took the bracelet off of him. Yep. And still has it. And he still has it. You know, I, I, <laughs> there are so many aspects to this that I really liked. And then I tweeted, I don't care for that bracelet. And my gosh, my Twitter, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. What if somebody took your bracelet off your wrist with your wife's name on it? I'm like, oh, okay. We're, we're appealing to children now. I get it. We're, we're, I get it. I get it, guys. It's important to him. A fan gave it to him, has his dog's name, has his kid's name, uh, his, his wife's name on there. The dog is like the kid. But couldn't you wait? Couldn't you wait till the end? That's the wacky part. He could have. <laughs> when we come back, I want to talk about the two... I guess the main events here, Gunther, Damian Priest, and obviously Cody and Solo in the big reveal. Roman Reigns has returned. But do you think now, obviously Bad Blood is going to go into this. Bad Blood is going to be the big story here where you're maybe going to get a triple threat match. Again, very safe for CM Punk. He did all of his hits. He did, he did the, he did the, I mean, the biggest spot for him was the elbow off the top rope. And he looked good. We're going to talk about this on a lot more. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's continue SummerSlam. I want to talk a little about AEW. Gunther defeated Damian Priest to win the World Heavyweight Championship in 16 minutes. This was a very hard-hitting match. I did not want to see Damian lose the title, but you know what? Gunther very much deserves this belt. He, uh, what a, Both of these guys, what a tremendous story, working your local indies to being in the biggest show, in the biggest match you know, for a world title. It, it's a tremendous, tremendous story for both of them. A, a gr great example of hard work, dedication gets you there. Very hard-hitting match. Damian would draw first blood on Gunther. Damien looked, chest looked gnarly. <laughs> yeah, big time. Oh my god. Damien looked for the title. Uh look for a title one, but Finn turned on him and put Gunther's legs on the ropes. By the way, talking about leg on the ropes, uh I don't know if many people noticed LA Knight Logan Paul, Logan's leg was on the was under the rope when he got pinned. Yes, which is so going to play into that story. That's going to play into it. So again, his the, the leg was on the rope. When Damien realized what happened, it was he would try to grab the throat of Finn, causing Gunther to put on get a sleeper on, and that was the end of the match. All right, cool, really good story. fun match, really good uh, story. I I want I would love to see Damien with the title one again. I I don't want this to be the only one for him. He's gonna he's gonna come out a huge baby face out of this, and you can oh, tell that's what they're doing. It was big it time. was it was well done to, to set that all up. 
Listen, and now this I dude, think we're going to get a re This dude's attempt. done everything. Like, this dude's done everything. Yeah. World champion. He's had multiple titles. He wrestled Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico in front of one of the best <laughs> crowds I've ever seen in my life. Uh, tremendous stuff. The Miz and Our Truth came out. They uh, they announced the attendance at fifty seven thousand five hundred uh, fifty seven thousand seven hundred and ninety one. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller entered and they insulted uh, uh, to insult them in Jelly Roll. Truth thought they were robbing Robert Robert Ge- Ge- Robert Gibson and Ricky Morton. He thought <laughs> and thought one of them got their eye fixed. <laughs> I popped for that hard. I couldn't believe he said that. Jelly Roll appeared in the ring with the chair to help Truth and Miz out and wipe them out. Great, fun. Before the main event, Cody was shown walking from his bus with his dog, Farrow. He ran into Arn, Arn Anderson. Thank God Arn didn't give him a gun. Yeah, or tell him to shoot the guy. That's the only thing missing. <laughs> that the was block. the only thing missing. He gave him that pep talk, except for the gun talk. Uh, very cool. Solo coming out to the ring. Cody came out to the most beautiful entrance I've ever seen. Uh, just really well put together. This was a multi-part match, okay? Solo was able to counter most of Cody's offense here. And they made sure to tell you that he had him scouting, scouted on commentary. They were telling you he was prepared for this. They went back and forth until Cody was able to hit a crossroads that sent out Tungaloa and Tama. Tama. Tama Tonga, bloodline rules match. Remember? Yep. Mm-hmm. It, and then it there turned into, an, it, and then <laughs> it became just every overbooked mess. Yes. Uh, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say this is this is a this is a new thing for WWE, or maybe it was an old thing. But now the presentation looks very different. They tend to do this in the big, big, big matches, so yes. nobody really looks terrible. Blood. They come out. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton get involved. They would chase the bloodline out. Jacob Fatu then comes out on the apron, puts Cody through a table. And then it looked like something happened here. Yeah. Fatu was out. He was on on the corner of the, the, the apron. Just not really, I mean, leg one leg up, but like kind of trying to get his bearings in order. I, he got hurt there. Yeah, he got hurt, and he you could tell he was he was trying to tell Solo, hey, get in the ring, finish, the, finish it off, because I was listening to what Brian had to say. Yeah, what was Brian saying? Was, well, Brian said that... Um, Not your neighbor, the, Brian. The, the Don't spot, listen to your neighbor, Brian. No, he doesn't know what he's talking no, about. I, <laughs> the spot was supposed to be them uh, tag-teaming or teaming up on Cody. Uh, yeah. And then Roman makes a save, and that, sure. it looks better that way. So he just called an audible and put him in the ring and said, do something. So that's how that ended. So, so yeah. Here, Roman's music hits. He has a new theme. He's wearing a, a new T-shirt. What is it? Original Tribal Chief, OTC. Yeah. I thought it was a mm-hmm. RoboCop reference. Mm. <laughs> what, isn't it, it OTC? Was... Isn't, isn't the, uh, the company that bought Detroit OTC? OPC? <laughs> Maybe OPC. <laughs> You should know this. You're a Detroit boy. You should know this. I know. Robocop right. isn't well, your super. Isn't your Superman minute. there? It, 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 it's been a minute, but no. It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Roman returned. He attacked his cousin. Roman and Cody gave each other a nod, clearly setting up something down the road. Cody gets a pin. One, two, three. Big celebration at the end. Very interesting stuff. All right. Roman's back. Heyman's going to come back. Here we go. You're setting up. I mean, War Games is in Vancouver. You're going to obviously do the Bloodline Civil War, but who's on what side? Obviously, you're going to have Roman. You're going to have the Usos. Maybe. We'll maybe. Uh, maybe you involved now that he's off. He doesn't have the IC title. Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Maybe you bring in another person from that family. Hikaleo's on his way. Do they bring in Hikaleo on that side? I don't know. But, well, and, now and they got to we'll wait see, and see what's going on with Jacob. With Jacob Fah, too. Yeah. No. And, and yeah. man, you know, that guy is so tremendous. Um, I, I hope it's not serious. I hope it's a quick thing. I, I hope this doesn't stop his momentum because he is so good. And I yes. want to see more of him. Uh, real uh, quick before you move yeah. on. Oh, by the uh, way, Hunter did wanted... say Hunter did say in the, in the, in the 
in the post scrum that he was a little banged up. Yeah, he was very vague. Yeah. Uh, as far as the show goes, as far as SummerSlam as a whole, I personally felt like this was a if this was a TV series, this was the mid the the mid um, mid season finale. Mid season or the finale, reset. Yes. The reset. Yeah, yeah, where you're where you're now. Okay, we're done with this part. Now we're building again to the end, yeah. which will be WrestleMania. That's how I looked at that whole show. Mm. Uh, let's see what else did we have here. Um, Shane McMahon. Let's go into AEW a little bit here. Shane McMahon met with Tony Khan on Monday at the Texas airport. <laughs> Interesting. It took place on Monday. In a statement given to Bully Ray on Busting Open After Dark by Shane. Okay? Shane said, Tony and I were connected through mutual friends. Through a mutual friend. I'm curious who the mutual friend is. And we had a great meeting. We talked about many things, but mostly about our shared love for the business and the rewards and challenges of working with family. I congratulate him on five year on the five-year anniversary of AEW and look forward to see how he evolves the business moving forward. Does this mean anything? I'm sure it does. I don't know what. You know? But man, you want to kind of stick it to... <laughs> Shane's always been that outlier in that family, man. Uh, you want to stick it to that company. Uh... I know that there was no interest initially in Shane returning. I know Shane wants to do something. He very much enjoys it. Man, you know, Wembley could be a fun place for him to show up. Him and Darby could have some crazy match. I don't know. I, I want to <laughs> see it. I, I'm curious about it. I, I, I get it. I know a lot of people don't want this, but I, I think this is something positive here. I never was a fan, so I'm not. I'm not as hyped about some him doing something. I know. I know you're you not. Are. I know you're not. And I know a mm -hmm. lot of people aren't, but I, I, I'm just... I think it's good for optics. I think I think for um, him doing something behind the scenes could be helpful. I think he would be another Ch year. That Shane's Tony a very smart guy with a lot of connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. you know, it, it, it helps. I don't know what they'll do. We'll see. Britt Baker suspended. He has a two-week suspension. Right? It's two weeks? Uh, they he's, I think Dave said one or two weeks. So, okay. so Dave reported she, she in the newsletter... Up. Britt Baker was yeah. suspended and fined by AEW following a backstage incident involving herself, MJF, and Alicia Tout. MJF and Alicia are dating. She sure. allegedly made a comment backstage, and MJF confronted her about it. This led to an investigation by HR and the company's disciplinary committee, which resulted in her suspension. Hence the mention of a suspension by Mercedes on Dynamite. I didn't understand what Mercedes was saying. I was like, oh, okay, they suspended her. And then, of course, a day later, we get the news. We spoke about this on Matt Men. And it kind of right. went viral on, on X about my comment about this. Because I said, this is not the first time there's been an incident with Britt. And then I continued to say, listen, it's a very competitive business. And you have to, you have to be aggressive about protecting your brand and yourself if you want to make it far. I don't know who's in the right here. I don't know if Brit just, you know, if they just caught Brit's end of the issue. I'm not, I'm not defending anybody here, and I'm not putting any blame on Brit. I don't know the situation, but this isn't the first time something like this has happened. We obviously, we saw the Thunder Rosa stuff, but there's other things also. So I don't go into backstage gossip. I only, I'll only talk about it once it's public like this. I don't, I don't like to do that, but listen, it, but you hear this about everybody. This is not, Brit's not the only one. People are very passionate about their positioning in wrestling, and they should be. I, know, I think it'll blow over. I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. But they did react very quickly, which is a positive here. The other thing that we got was a setup to a match on, that's going to happen on Dynamite here. We got last week. Brian Danielson and Jeff Jarrett in a no DQ match with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat as the special guest. Now, is he the special guest referee, or is he just like hanging out? I think he's just hanging out. They didn't say anything else. And he's done that before. He's been there ringside before. Just there. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. I, I Very cool. You're also going to get AW American slash international title eliminator match. MJF versus Kyle Fletcher. That should be a good match. Shibata versus Brian Keith. I think Brian Keith just got cleared to return. And I'm sure there's going to be more matches announced this week. Listen, they're headed into, they're headed into a very big show. They're headed into a very big contract, apparently, allegedly. 
This is the moment. If you're going to make some moves, you got to do it now. The momentum has actually been positive for them. Forget about the ratings. Forget, let's not talk about that. But obviously, we're seeing that there's, there's a shift here happening, right? Their TV's been a little bit better. Their attendance has been consistent. There's, it's not declining like it was. Now, now we're in the we're in the piece by piece rebuilding. I think this is a very important two months for them between all in, all out, Grand Slam, the contract, Danielson possibly winning the title, uh, other people coming into the company like a Ricochet or a Shane McMahon. These are all b rebuilding for whatever they do next. Um, listen, there's also some rumors about Adam Cole and what, what's happening with him. So I, I, 2023 versus 2024, I think they're in a much better position now as far as their TV goes. But I don't know what that shot in the arm is going to be. Is it going to be a captivating also, story that generates WWE viewers to come over? Is it going to be Kenny Omega returning and doing a six-star match? I don't know anymore. I really don't know what the answer is here. Also, uh, they will get a break because of the Olympics I'll be ending next week. So they'll, we'll get some yeah. of that viewership back. Yeah. And some of that will come back. I, I got to tell you, I don't, I don't think they're, they're being affected as much as people think. I, I like, I'm not watching the, I, I'm watching the Olympics. I'm not watching it in that sense. Final segment coming up of the show. A few more things to touch on wrestling observer live here on sports byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. WWE got a new broadcast team coming in September. Joe Tessitore from ESPN will be joining starting on the September 2nd edition of Monday Night Raw, which takes place in Denver, Colorado. Call will head back to SmackDown as it moves to USA in the fall. I don't know much about Joe. Do you? He's a real good broadcaster. I know he's done some college football. Um, I think baseball he's done. He's What's really, really wrestling fandom like? Uh, they they interviewed him on the pre-show, and he was um, very. He said he watched. He he grew up watching like the the indies, um, the territory days. He, he came comes from that background, so he's really into it, and he seems to be very knowledgeable. So. And he has been doing interviews. He's 53. With How shows. did he grow up watching the yeah. territories at 53? Well, I did. I was in the same, I'm in that same age group. So, yeah. He's from New York. Mm -hmm. What yep. territory was he watching? Uh, he mentioned it. But uh, I'm not we'll, sure. we'll find out. Uh, I, I, hope he, I hope he does well. I, I always hope that when they come in and they don't really have a wrestling background, they do well. You know, Pat McAfee was a great example for color commentary and how great he's and been. And it looks like he's going to be paired with him. So yeah. we'll see how and I, and I don't know if he's staying. I don't know if Pat's going to stay once college According football starts. I heard he was because Mondays he's not doing anything. He's not okay. doing anything obligated to that. So I heard he was. Okay. Guys, this was a fun weekend of wrestling. We'll be back next week talking, I guess, the build to everything that's happening, especially all in. That's the next big one. Let's see what they pull up. Let's see what other matches get announced. All this and a whole lot more. Guys, this was a blast. We will see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live. Take care.